What's up guys? Trying to get a live stream going right now. So if any if there's any technical issues, please let me know. What's up guys? Trying to get a live okay. stream going. Just checking right the sound now. right now, so it sounds good. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get started here. Um so for the people who don't know me yet um, we got lots of new subscribers lately and uh, I'm super excited about that finding some people interested in um, filmmaking visual effects blender after effects that kind of stuff and uh, yeah so I just want to sh share my work a little what I'm doing right now because uh, it's not very often that I that I'm allowed to share what I'm doing but uh, that particular project um, here I am allowed to so I'm gonna do that in this little live stream I'm not gonna be live for a long time um, just for a little um, but you know if you're here yet please make sure to smash the like button and uh, say hi in the comments um, yeah and if you have any questions about what I'm doing here please let me know that's what I'm doing this live stream for anyways uh, let's get started here so most of the visual effects for this short film are done already I'm just doing final touch-ups because I get got some notes back and uh, the short film I'm working on it's uh, like an action short film so it's uh, we have Brady here the little guy on the right see in the back of his head he this guy he has to fight off a bunch of bad guys he got kidnapped and now he has to shoot a bunch of people so I had to do mostly like muzzle flares like this like he's running around just shooting and stuff like that and uh, most of those things are fine I had to do a little bit of blender work as well I know lots of you people are interested in my blender uh, stuff so here for example this clip uh, we had this little fake button here and I had to replace it with uh, actual button and I did that with the help of blender so this is what it looked like in the end so this actually is a light switch um, that doesn't really matter the 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 idea of this button is one guy runs into it or gets pushed into it and then it activates the door of the driving van so that's how the door actually opens which is important for later on in the story so just for like a little insert here this shot is not even a second long um, I just needed this button here and did that in blender but right now I'm doing touch-ups for those little muzzle flares because this guy is trying to shoot him he's holding his hand back and I needed to adjust those muzzle flares because in my pre previous version you see this little glare here it was just too strong um, so I had to tone it down a little which happens quite often when you do visual effects you have one vision and um, eventually uh, it turns out uh, you know the clients w uh, want, want a little more or in that case a little less so that's what I did already and I, I can break down how I did those effects real quick um, because I, actually it's just one shot it's just this uh, this flare here and all it does is just flares up a little and then it's, there's a little smoke and that's all I really used but uh, the way I did use it is I set those muzzle flares on screen because it's a light source and when you work with the light source then um, those things have to be set to screen or to add add would have worked just fine too but I can show you what the difference is when I set this to add it's just much glowier and more saturation and I feel a screen usually gives me better results more realistic results I see a few more people popped in welcome to my live stream uh, my name is Phil Flock and uh, we're doing some visual effects today and again if you're new to this channel or new to the stream make sure to like it so I know that you guys are actually watching but welcome so we have three shots here 
What I didn't do yet in the previous version, I didn't add um, shells. And usually I like to add those too. It's, a, it's just a little thing. And for that, I actually use those later on. So I'm gonna just copy it from a later shot and insert it here, copy paste it. See, this is what the shell looks like. And bring it wherever the gun is, bring it to the right scale, bring the scale down until I feel like, okay, that's the right size. It's still, it's still um, animated from the previous uh, shot, but I'm just gonna change the animation to right because when you have a gun, the shell fl fl flies to the right or up, upright. So this is what I'm gonna do. And depending on how the gun is angled, which we don't see it in this shot, I can improvise a little where exactly the shell is gonna fly towards. So right now I have this. It's just a little detail, but it does make the difference if you add those. So I always try to do that. So we have the shell flying. Can you see the difference between this and the rest of the shot? Why it doesn't feel like it's implemented? Because there is no motion blur on this, but there has to be, and that's an easy fix. I just have to turn on this motion blur button, but also this here. It enables motion blur for the entire shot, which makes the entire shell less visible, but it's still there. And I feel like that's an important detail um, to make sure you ha always have in there. So now I'm going to duplicate it, bring it to the next shot where the gun shoots again, bring the first frame where it appears there. Now I'm just going to change the angle a little so it's not exactly the same. Now I have another shell flying to the, to the uh, camera left. It's there right. I'm going to do it one more time because there's one more shot. I think two total. There's two more. Again, bring the first shot. Where's the gun? There it is. This one could even go almost straight back, but in a little curve but still out of shot, out of uh, the frame, because I don't want it to, um, you know, stay there. Otherwise it would just be in midair after it's done and I don't want that, so. Pew. So now when I watch this, I, I see shells flying off. And that, it's just a little detail, but you would, if it wasn't there, you would feel like, it would feel like uh, something is wrong with that. Okay, there's one more shot. I don't think I need a shell here because it's like so the gun is covered. I even added a little muzzle flare here. Actually, I feel like it has to be more here, blurrier. Actually, we're gonna bring it behind his head. Since it's behind his head, I'm gonna draw a little mask. With F, I feather the mask because it's just for one frame, so it's smack it. So now the note here was that I added blood here on the side, but the director wants the blood to actually be on the wall. So what I'm going to do is add, uh, make this blood bigger across the wall here. And the problem is why I didn't do that previously is that there is this wall is going to be in the shot like one more time at least. And uh, I wanted to uh, save the time of putting the blood there over and over, especially everything is moving. So it's going to be very difficult to track. But um, the director wanted it. So the director gets what he wants. So first step is making this blood bigger. I'm going to rotate it so it's actually going up, like behind his head. So I'm going to draw another mask. Maybe I don't even have to do that. Let's see. So now it's coming from behind his head. Let's do this. Let's draw a little mask. Yeah, that's a thing with visual effects. It's a lot of work. You have to be very exact. 
but um, the more detail you put into it, the better it's going to look. And that's the difference between cheap visual effects and uh, you know good visual effects. You just um, have to go the extra mile sometimes. And I'm getting the compliment a lot that you know visual effects these days and TV shows or Netflix shows they don't look as good as what I'm doing, and that has different reasons. The most obvious reason is I'm putting mo more effort into it than, than they do. Of course, they have more people working on those things, but I still put more effort into it. I'm not necessarily more skilled, probably same level, but they are on a time crunch. When they work on those visual effects, they need to get so and so many minutes a day done, and uh, TV doesn't always have time for that. Cool, so I have the blood splatter now, um, the blood bursts. Now I need a blood splatter on the wall, and that's that's the tricky part. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to find um, a cool blood splatter. I actually, I think I used one already. I'll just use the same one. Something I wouldn't necessarily um, recommend doing, but that's what I do all the time when I use um, some what is it called like stock footage or assets then I like to reuse them all the time in the same file just because it's not that cluttered here you know it's I don't have to look for so many things so I used that one before see this is what it uh, looks like now I have to bring it actually it already looks like it's like on this curve here we'll see how it's gonna look in the m movement because of course I'm gonna I has to come from the other side never mind so I'm gonna flip it horizontally because right now it's coming from the left but it has to come from the right well there's two ways to do that either I just turn it and I hope that's gonna work yep that would work Obviously, it's not moving like my uh, footage is moving yet, but I'm gonna fix that once uh, I pick the right angle. Yeah, that's gonna be a tricky one. And usually, the way I like to do those things is I first I try to track my camera because if the camera can track all this movement, which is unlikely because there's lots of blurriness lots of mo people moving around that usually doesn't work that well but um, if it does probably it won't best way to try it is I'm gonna put a solid here make it bigger so I can actually s see it So technically this shoot it's too big. This solid should be tracked to our environment, but we're gonna see if it actually is. Rotation doesn't really matter, I just want it flat. So now on the solid I can see if it's moving the way my location is, uh, my set is moving and it is until the last frame. We'll see if we still can actually use it. So now what I'm going to do is I have my solid here, but I'm going to take my blood splatter, make it 3D because we're now we're working in a 3D environment. Um, Oh, I got my first quest question in this uh, live stream. Hi, we, we, uh, we get to tell how do we uh, how do we start as a professional? Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, just gaining the skills when it comes to visual effects or Blender or After Effects or filmmaking in general, just getting the skills is just the first step. It's just like any other job. 
uh, when you start as a mechanic, you have to learn how to how it works before you can actually get paid for it, right? Um, the way I like to do it is I like to create my own films. I make my own own stuff, show what I can do, and then eventually people are gonna start reaching out to me on Instagram or Facebook or email or they get my number from a friend and ask me, hey, could you do this or this for my film or for my production? And then I'm like, yes, and I charge that and that. This is how much money I want for this work. And then either they say yes or they say no or they try to suppress the, the um, push down the price but that's usually how I do it um, there is another way if you if we're talking about visual effects right now you can um, what is it apply for a job in a visual effects house me personally I've never done that the only times I worked in the visual effects house were for example on Call of Duty um, I worked as a contractor so same thing they saw my work and they were like hey we need this uh, we need you for five weeks for a Call of Duty and are you available? Yes, no, maybe. And then uh, that's how I got hired. So if you have, that, that's the thing. It's all about connections and you don't necessarily need those connections if you um, have a following, if you don't have the following and not, not the connection, um, then you just start making your own things and try to make them as good as you can, put them online and... Uh, you know see if people are interested because if you are good then people are gonna reach out to you because there is work there is enough work um, if m maybe um, if you're they're not reaching out maybe you're just working on the wrong things so tr just try to experiment um, if you are um, you know uh, if you know my work then like some I made like a Dragon Ball film, for example, a fan film, and I got a lot of work for that from that because there were, were a lot of visual effects, and so people were interested in uh, hiring me. So that's what I would do. So Dave, Dave, I hope that answered your question. So where was I? Oh, okay. So I have to copy paste the move the not the moving information but the uh, transform information of my solid here onto my blood sp blood splatter so now I copy pasted it so it's at the right spot it's probably too small so I'm gonna scale it up Now I can, um, let's actually flip it. I think that's going to look better. I do that by, um, I go on the scale, turn off the constraint properties, because then I can just scale it just this way. Okay, now I can move it to the position I need it. Now it's smack. And that's already pretty good. It's not perfect yet. I probably have to mask it a little. Making sure where's my blood tracker. Okay, this thing has to be on top. Uh, you're very welcome, Dave. Um, yeah, I mean, Finding work as an artist is always a tricky part, and that's actually the main reason why I started this channel. Um, because um, I try to help other creators to create and make a living with it. And not gonna lie, it's not easy. It took me personally, took me like nine years of being a filmmaker before I actually started making good money with it. And I still struggle sometimes. It's not like, oh, I'm good now. No, I still struggle. And uh, I think that's just part of the game. I don't think that ever stops. 
Okay, so what I want to change here, I, I think I don't want to use the blood splatter up here. I'm just going to use this part. I'm just going to draw a mask around the part I actually want. Again, F for feathering. Smack it. Okay, that looks already pretty cool. Okay, now we have to adjust the colors a little. When we, I always try to look for a reference, what do other things look like? And I don't have any red or anything, you know, liquid in this shot, which is a bummer. So I just have to improvise. But usually what I like to do is I set this to overlay and that already brings it a little closer to the colors of the environment. I also bring the opacity down, maybe 80%, maybe. Yeah. So even though I removed parts of it, I still want it to be bigger. Maybe it's too big. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, the problem is with the the what is it called the tracker only tracked so far but not until the end so now I need to fix the one two three three last shots And I probably have to do that manually. So I'm going to bring this to exact the same spot where the other one was. The exact same size the other one was. And I hope that nobody's going to see my trickery here. Okay, that works. So now just for the last few frames I have to track it manually. So I uh, keyframe the position. I look for, let's say this this little spot here. I try to keep it. Oh boy, that's gonna be difficult. Okay, it's just a few frames, so let's hope for the best. Yeah, right from the get go, it doesn't look bad. Now I just have to add motion blur, the same way I did it before. So there's motion blur actually on the movement because the camera's moving. The camera's moving, so I needed to make sure that the motion blur on everything looks the same. Yeah, this is a tricky one. And that's not even the hard shot. There's going to be a one which is going to be way more difficult. Um, but uh, we'll see. Shoot. Yeah, but that's just... Yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes, you know, this, uh, this stuff is a lot of work, but 
somebody has to do it. This is my favorite part of filmmaking. It's close. I, I like it to you know work on those things in my on my own time. That's that's gonna be difficult. Yeah, it's just the last few frames. Yeah, I'm actually thinking, you know what, I'm not gonna do it with the 3D tracker anymore. I'm gonna, um, uh, what is it called? Do I have a camera in here? Let's remove the camera. I'm gonna track it manually because it's, it just doesn't work. Sometimes that's how it is. You just try something, you see it doesn't work. But that's the thing, there is multiple ways to do things. And my way now is going to be actually track the movement properly. So I'm going to go here, instead of track camera, I'm going to go track motion. I need the rotation and the position. Now I have two trackers and those I'm going to place manually I think that's going to be a good one so we need a lot of contrast for that and and making sure that those things whatever you're trying to track there's they're going to be in the frame for the entire time if you use blender um, tracking in blender works similarly but not it's not quite the same so I'm not now just gonna go through it frame by frame, make sure making sure that those two trackers um, actually stay where they are. The smaller the search area, the faster it's gonna go, but you still need it big enough so when the frame moves very fast, you need to uh, you know adjust it. And that's a good thing about, back to Dave's question, uh, how to get hired for work. That's a good thing about visual effects. Not many people can or want to do that. And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. So if you're actually passionate about all of that, um, then it's more likely to, you know, get hired for visual effects than other jobs like actors like lots of people want to be actors and it's not that hard to it's just as hard to do it to be an actor but you need more patience for this another question from Dave is there any camera technique or you just work with what you get um, camera technique, what do you mean exactly? For visual effects or for uh, real cameras? Or what do you mean exactly, camera technique? Because there's obviously lots of techniques, but um, depends on what, what you mean exactly. But also, if you're someone who's passionate about visual effects and you know you want to, you know, work, you can always send me your your reel or your material, and I can look at it, and uh, maybe I'm gonna hire you for work because I'm doing a lot by myself, but I also have to outsource sometimes because I can't do it all because I still shoot. It's not like I. I'm only doing visual effects, I also shoot. Um, 
so all that takes a lot of time so I like to hire people too for my work the last action short film um, visual effects I did I hired one more person to do that because sometimes that's what I need to do okay I think that that's pretty much it now when I go through it and I see if the track is alright I want to say it doesn't have to be perfect but actually it should be perfect because if it's not perfect um, it's gonna be swimming and that doesn't look good so try to do this process as good as you can so now I'm gonna this tracking information here I'm gonna apply it to um, a null object so this null object here it doesn't do anything besides having this information saved so now when I I can apply my blood splatter or my even my muzzle flare or even my blood burst I can apply this or parent this to it's probably easier when I do it in here parent it to my null object so now everything thing everything should be moving the way my footage is moving it's not bad it's not perfect let's see how much we can get away with okay what I mean if a client asks for a job and you have to and everything by yourself oh, I see so if a client asks me to shoot something for him I always ask okay what are we shooting what is the genre okay it's in that case it's an action film so I know uh, what kind of genre it is and then I ask him okay what kind of mood are we looking for and I'm asking him for references show me a movie or a scene this is what you want it to look like okay this is what I want it to feel like this is how fast or slow I want, want it to be edited and based on that I pick my camera techniques or even my camera itself what kind of lighting I use okay do I use a haze machine do I not use a haze machine so it's always based on um, on uh, the, the client what he wants very often the client is like okay just do your thing I love what you do just do your thing and I can do whatever I want awesome then I just pick whatever my favorite equipment is I mostly shoot from a gimbal uh, I use mostly a 24 to 70 millimeter lens I shoot on the FX3 because I know how fast I can be with that um, if I have the budget for another camera operator I'm gonna give him another camera either he shoots handheld or he shoots uh, also from a gimbal and yeah that, that's basically my, my my favorite like it's hard to say okay what's your favorite camera technique because it always depends on the shot every shot is different when we look at this shot here uh, for example this is not my favorite this is a lot of camera movement this is a lot of shake um, it's usually it's not what I do I like it smooth I want it controlled that you see what's happening but a scene like this where it's like in a closed space a very tight environment you know then a little shakiness and you know it, it just makes it feel real you know um, but usually yes I, I like to keep it in a gimbal or a slider or steady cam keep it smooth um, that's what I usually like to do okay let's look at this shot the blood here it's not terrible but when I look at it it's just not perfect you know Okay, that's better. Dave, let me, uh, let me know, are you a visual effects person or are you a filmmaker or a camera operator? What, what do you exactly do? So I know better how to answer your questions. Okay, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't look too bad. 
here it's starting to moving already it shouldn't I can always go back to my uh, null object and correct um, my keyframes sometimes I just like to delete keyframes and see if it looks better in that case it actually does I think yeah that looks better already okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blur it out a little because it is a little further in the background than my people here here this movement shouldn't happen okay I'm gonna here this is my null object I'm gonna bring it a little back uh, once you start manually adjusting then it's getting dirty it's I don't I usually don't like to do that but sometimes that's what you need to do okay let's look at it one more time okay that's it's definitely better and one more thing when I can't get it perfect I'm gonna do that later probably okay this is too low I I like to add camera movement like camera shake to the entire image so everything is moving a little and that's gonna bring the entire movement more together or like a little zoom in or so I always like to do that especially when the track is not perfect like here and again that's not even the easy shot uh, that's not even the hard shot then this is actually the easy one what if I bring it further up maybe it's gonna sell better okay I am overthinking things make the mask even smaller feather the mask, it is feathered alright that's pretty much it so thank you guys uh, for stopping by, especially Dave, my uh, only audience, as it seems. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do more of those uh, little live streams uh, when I can, when I work on things. Make sure to check out my videos I recently uploaded. And uh, see you 